Hello, it is Friday, April 8th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Friday puzzle today, so our first of two themeless puzzles for the week. And this themeless edition of the Daily Solve was brought to you by Skella Chicken, Kathleen Quinn, and as always, the inestimable Hood Monster. So thank you so much to the three of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for supporting this series directly and helping make it a part of my uh, daily work. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And thank you to everybody else who has backed the Patreon campaign at any level. If you back at that benefactor level, you get the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses coffee mug, uh, as well as that recognition, of course. And at any other level, you also get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the Patreon feed to date, as well as the extra channel in the Daily Solve Discord chat server. Although the rest of the Discord chat server is free for anybody to join. And I just recorded the... Um, monthly bonus puzzle for March, which was entitled File Your Taxes and was uh, highly tax-themed, although in the sort of scattershot way that the uh, monthly puzzle tends to be, if you're not familiar with those. Anyway, that'll go up on the Patreon feed sometime in the next day, I guess as will the next Passwords Spring Themeless League competition puzzle, which I've not yet solved, but perhaps I'll do that today. Anyway, um, shall we get on to today's crossword. As I said, this is a Friday crossword. It was constructed by Caitlin Reed, uh, who's done a couple of dozen puzzles for the New York Times, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's get going, shall we? Okay. Setting for a few good men informally. Oh, you know, I've actually never seen a few good men. I know there's a very famous courtroom scene. Not sure, though. Blank order. Ending with freak or fool. Looks like ish. Freakish or foolish. Safety net? Question mark. So the question mark, some kind of pun or wordplay indicator. Uh, I'm not sure. Gran Turismo maker. Well, the way this is formatted makes me think it's a model of car. Is it a Ferrari, maybe? I'm not sure. Let's go back to the acrosses. Hang around with. So I explain this usually, but I will explain it each time just to make sure people aren't missing it. The parenthetical bit here, hang around with, means we're going to apply the around with, not just to the hang, but also to the answer. So the answer could be something like pal, because if you also applied around with to it, it would fit hang around with. So hang around with, pal around with. Without the without that around with parenthetical, if this just said hang, we could maybe infer pal and think, oh, I guess they could sort of, maybe they mean hang around, pal around. Uh, but it would be a much more difficult thing to spot. So that's what that's for. Anyway, this, this might be the answer, but without any crosses, it's hard to know for sure. What about this Insta post? So this is Instagram post. And the fact that Insta has been contracted from Instagram to Insta suggests the answer will be a contraction or slang term as well. So probably a pic, a picture. That does make this look like pal around. Levine of pop music. Oh, is there an Adam Levine? That sort of sounds familiar. Don't think I know his music, but that sounds plausible. And gotcha in a groovier era could be I dig. So <laughs> the groovier referencing the, the time period that this would have been used. The I guess the 60s most specifically in, in the 70s as well, I guess. Gotcha, I dig, groovy. Uh, I guess maybe actually the 70s even more than the 60s, now that I think about it. Pacific Coast Capital. Um, is it Lima, Peru? Would be what I would think it might be. And then let's look at these. Revealed all. It could be came clean. And an expert problem solver is... Whoa, whoa. Um, I don't know, math nerd or something. I don't think that's correct. Police. Well, it could be, actually it could be a T because police could be get real, get real. Um, so yeah, that's plausible. And woos with words. Coaxes, perhaps? No, 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 no. What about this? Actress Tracy Blank Ross. Oh, I can 
I can picture this person in my head, but I can't, I cannot think of her second name. Ellen, maybe, and now, I don't know. Love of Lucre, Lucre. So this would refer to ill-gotten gains, I would think. Oh, love. Did I say lover? Love. Oh, greed, I suppose, then. Yes, I think I misread that as lover, and that put me on the wrong track for a moment. But uh, love of lucre, so it's a love of lucre, so it's a a, a noun in this case. Well, I guess they'd be nouns in either case. Anyway, I was thinking of it as referring to a person, but no. Frustrated outburst. Ga, maybe? If this is the outburst itself. So you never know with a clue like this whether it's referring to the actual outburst itself, the, the thing you would exclaim, or if it's saying... A frustrated outburst is a cry, for instance. I don't know. You know, you wouldn't you wouldn't say cry, but that would describe the frustrated outburst as well. So you don't know. You have to just get it from context and crosses. 5.5 point type size. Interesting. I'm not... I don't think I know what this is. I'll be curious to see what this is. I assume this is typography related and not some kind of red herring, but we'll have to see. Refined could be honed. You could hone a blade, I suppose, refine it. Start to a logical conclusion. Ah, you could say ergo, therefore. So you've you've proven something logically and then you will say ergo, my conclusion is correct. Therefore it is correct. Yeah, what is this? 5.5 point type size, I don't know. An expert problem solver. Oh, a mathlete? Okay. So I guess, right. So there's a bit of misdirection here. We think of a problem solver being somebody who uh, can find their way out of a difficult situation. But here they mean, it's being a bit more literal, someone who literally solves math problems, a mathlete, an expert at that. Fair enough. Maybe this is Ellen after all. And then like refrigerators at night, sometimes they're rated, or maybe it's Ellie. I'm going to, I'm going to guess everything incorrectly until I finally have my uh, my last unguessed possibility with the cross. Maybe that's what'll happen. Oh, woos with words. Charms? No, that still doesn't fit. Sorry. What is that? Here we have blank bar. Could be a tapas bar, maybe? A kind of restaurant serving Spanish-style tapas, maybe. Let's check the crosses here because I'm not completely certain about that. Wanted one. Wanted. Oh, a want. So this could be. This could be a verb. You wanted one of them, or it could be a noun. Wanted could be an adjective. Could be one who is wanted, and I suppose even that could be a criminal or somebody whose skills are highly desired. For instance, anyway, if it were a criminal, it could be an outlaw, one who's wanted. There are wanted wanted posters for this outlaw. Easily had. So. If, so again, this could refer to more than one thing. And this is common with the, the themeless puzzles, by the way. they Once we get to the themeless days, Friday and Saturday, they tend to get more difficult, not necessarily because we we have obscure trivia or something like that. It's because we have these vague clues that could be a number of different things. And the only way to be certain which is to have some other crosses that will help give you that context. So anyway, something that's easily had could be something that is easily obtained, cheap to purchase, for instance, or it could refer to a person who is gullible, uh, someone who's... Actually, it could refer to a... Well, it could refer to something that describes such a person. In other words, they're naive. So actually, working through that <laughs> helped out because it, it allowed me to arrive at naive there, which may not be correct, but it, it fits the crosses I have so far, and it does fit the answer. The clue, sorry. Really, really fancy. Once again, this could be something that is incredibly glitzy and high-end and expensive, maybe, or it could mean you really like something or someone. You really fancy it. You want it. You crave it, which looks like what it is here. And peak. So once again, this could be a, a peak meaning to get your attention, to peak your attention. But it could also mean a fit of peak. It could mean you're upset. Um, I don't know which it is in this case. Subjects of Monet paintings in Venice and at Lavacor. Um, not sure. Probably ends with an S though. Oh, Tracy Ellis Ross. Yes, it is true that I, it took me until getting the last letter to say this, but now that I see Tracy Ellis Ross, I can 
the na- now that name finally sounds correct and familiar. So sorry about that. Anyway, I just put an S there because this clue says subjects, plural. Sun something and nuclear unit nickname. Oh, maybe a rad. Isn't that nuclear unit? I assume that's short for radiation in some fashion. What about this sign of fall? I don't know. I'm not sure about all this. Maybe not. Um, oh, this isn't what it looks like, <laughs> exclamation point. Oh, I feel as though this could be almost anything. This is certainly a puzzle full of misdirection and, and clues that maybe can are taken, have a bit of wordplay going on, can be taken in a different way. Shameless error for short. So this was a UK uh, television program that was remade in the US. And I th- think, if I'm thinking of the right one anyway, I think I'm thinking of the right show. I think it aired on Showtime, which for short in the U.S., the abbreviation is SHO, S-H-O. Fatal Attraction, Popular Leafy Perennial, and Former Center of Los Angeles. Oh. So my first thought when I read this was that this referred to an urban core, maybe the sort of center of the city of Los Angeles, but probably not. Probably it refers to a sports player. Could it be Shaquille O'Neal? One of the basketball players I know. And it fits with that O, so perhaps that's the answer. In and of itself. Um, is it per se? Say that that isn't true per se. That isn't true in and of itself. Fatal attraction. There's the question mark, meaning some kind of pun or wordplay going on here. What about this? Oh, in and of itself. And then we had that here as well. Oh, and this has... A question mark. So this one is punnier. What was this again? Woos with words. Oh, chats up. There we go. Yes, you could chat somebody up. Woo them with words. And oh, I'm sure I know what this is, but I just can't can't place it. The subject of Monet paintings. Why do I not see it? Um. Let's see. What else can we What else can we fill in? Boost someone's signal in a way. Ah, so this could be a social media thing. This could be retweeting somebody on Twitter. So you retweet something somebody else has tweeted. You repost it, that is, and you've boosted their signal. As people used to say, I don't see that as often anymore, signal boosting. Um, What about this? Um, Like Los Angeles's Griffith Observatory. Don't think I know that reference. And here we have gives some stress. And here we have stage support. Stage support. So again, this could be a physical support. It could be a member of staff who supports, you know, dramatic productions. Um, I'm not sure. What about this? Number one with the, the top, maybe? Number one, the top. I mean, that seems plausible enough with that T. What about this? A bunch of crock, and there's a question mark, so pun or wordplay going on. Not sure. And what about this? Hardly worth mentioning. It's hardly worth mentioning. It's no, it's not. Does this start with N? Peak. Oh, spleen. Yes. So this is this means a fit of. In this case, it means peak in the sense of a fit of peak, or a, a you're upset and and something is you're, you're venting your spleen. In this case, it's a, a bit of peak, a bit of spleen, as they as they say. So that's a tough one. Um, wouldn't have jumped straight to that. Certainly, definitely needed some crosses, and actually needed to infer that perhaps hardly worth mentioning starts with no or not in some way to help me get to spleen. Oh, sunsets. So it is sun something. Subject of Monet paintings in Venice and at Lavacore would be sunsets. There we go. All right. Um, so what was this again? Hardly worth mentioning. No. Hmm. And a bunch of crock. What is that? Increment on a scale. Well, <laughs> yet again, in keeping with the, this, this sort of character of this puzzle, this could be any number of scales. It could be 
a semitone, actually, if it's a musical scale. So first inclination probably would be to think of uh, scales of weights and measurements, that sort of thing. Um, but with the number of letters and that E, I'm wondering if it means a musical scale and a semitone. A semitone is the sort of standard unit that separate. If you look on a piano, for instance, the um, in the interval between any note on that piano and the next one, whether it's black or white. So the closest note to that one, that's the, that's the difference of a semitone. And uh, a whole tone is two, two differences. So two of those gaps, I mean. Okay, so what about this? In and of itself. Oh, <laughs> meta, perhaps. That's very clever. That's, this is a very clever little couplet of clues. We have in and of itself, which I do think is probably per se, and then in and of itself, question mark, in, a, <laughs> in, in almost a more meta way. It's referring to itself. It's meta. It's uh, um, metatextual or, or um, you know, self-referential in and of itself. At least I think that's probably the answer, but let's look, let's look here. Popular leafy perennial. <sighs> hmm. So this is a plant, presumably. I'm just not seeing what this is. And what about this? Fatal attraction. Fatal attraction with a pun. And here, hardly worth mentioning. I mean, it looks like no big deal, but that's obviously not the answer. Oh, no biggie? No, that doesn't fit. What about this? A bunch of crock. Pats? Pats of butter? And off the chain, say... This looks like illusion. Sorry, I just glanced it up. And so this isn't what it looks like. Oh, optical illusion, surely. There we go. This isn't what it looks like. Question, exclamation point, optical illusion. So the, the exclamation point, often what that will mean is we're describing the thing using the clue rather than defining it or serving as a synonym, if you see what I mean. So um, to, to phrase this clue in a way that didn't use the exclamation point I'm trying to think how you would, I mean, this would be a terrible wording of a clue, so you wouldn't do it, but it could be something like something that isn't what it looks like, if you see what I mean. Whereas this isn't what it looks like. You can almost imagine a person sort of pointing to it. That's, I guess that's another way to think of the exclamation point. Imagine somebody exclaiming this and pointing at the thing in question. So rather than defining it, they're, they're remarking on it. So this isn't what it looks like, an optical illusion. And this, this clue is almost that because, uh, it's sort of a misdirection in terms of how you, how you figure out the answer. It gives some stress. Accents. There we go. Yet again, some misdirection in this in this themeless this Friday themeless puzzle by Caitlin Reed. So to stress the particular part of a word, you're accenting that part of the word. You're stressing it, as opposed to giving some stress, as in. Um, burdening something with a great deal of, of weight physically or something like that, or psychological stress. It didn't mean either of those things. Okay, what about this? Stage support? I'm not sure. And here, Sea World Roller Coaster Ride. I don't know. And here, where lava lava skirts are worn. Um, I don't know. I mean, if I had to guess, it would be maybe somewhere in Polynesia, but I'm not sure. Shooting game. Oh, craps, right? You shoot craps, don't you? So here's, again, a bit of maybe light misdirection. You think shooting game and you maybe think skeet shooting or clay pigeons or something like that. I don't, maybe those are the same thing. I don't know. But uh, uh, in any case, we're thinking in this case of shooting dice in craps. I think that's probably the answer with that P. And here we have Jenny for one. Jenny for one. I'm not sure. There, there's not a ship named Jenny, is there? USS Jenny? I have no idea. SeaWorld roller coaster ride. I'll probably need to get this by thinking of marine related sort of oceanic terms, maybe, and just hope I hope I can get something with the crosses. Key element of opera seria. Is it an aria? I mean an aria would be part of many operas. but I'm not sure. Sign of fall. Again, 
This might mean autumn, the season, but it may very well mean something else. It may mean a downfall or most simply a physical tumble. Don't know which. Tiny seeds of green fruits, technically pips maybe? Boy, I don't, this nuclear unit, I'm going to feel silly when I eventually see it, I'm sure. I'm sure I will. That's the spirit. Here's another exclamation point clue. That's the spirit. So what is this? What kind of spirit would it be talking about? And here we have Nubian Museum locale. And, oh, right, setting for a few good men. Well, let's, let's do the downs. I don't think we've just done a straightforward look through the downs, have we? Safety net. Oh, Grand Trees, maybe this is Ferrari. No, that's not enough letters, I don't think. Sorry, what was this safety deck? Sped away immediately for Gran Turismo. I sped away in my Gran Turismo, if that isn't even a car. That is, in fact, a car. Uh, safety net. Oh, with a question mark again, right? I really need to look out for that. So some kind of pun or wordplay. At the ready and nuclear unit nickname. Uh, fatal attraction. Okay, we have more letters now. Fatal attraction. Oh, a siren song. Ah, so in in the um, in the Odyssey for the the story the story of the sirens and their song, it is literally a fatal attraction. They would they would uh, coax um, sailors to their to their doom. The most dangerous uh, chatting up. Okay, popular leafy perennial. What is this? Oh, is it hosta or hosta or something? I think I've seen the name of this plant before, but I don't know it well enough to be able to just fill it in. Hardly worth mentioning. Oh, nominal. I see. So sometimes you could see, yeah, so does hosta here. So you'll say, ah, oh, you'll be paid a nominal fee. In other words, it's not, wouldn't really be a living wage. It's it's sort of an honorarium. It's there to, it's, it's a formality. It's nominal. Hardly worth mentioning. Toddler's eruption. I don't know, mania? Not sure. A bunch of crock. Maybe it is pats after all. It's in pats of butter. That's funny. I didn't expect that to be the case. Off the chain, say. Oh, loose. So off the chain has a slang meaning, of course, which is this, I don't know, party is off the chain. It's really uh, just, it's, it's lit, I guess, as you could also say in modern slang. Um, I guess lit more modern than off the chain. But in, in this case, I think it simply means literally off the chain. So a dog or something has been let loose off the chain. And mononymous singer of Alive 2015. So Sia is a singer, right? Maybe maybe that person sang Alive? I'm not sure. I don't think I know that song. What about this? Sushi fish that's not served raw. An eel, I would think. And grand could be regal. And, oops. And musical based on a comic strip would be Annie. Okay, there we go. That looks right. And then Toddler's Eruption. Malar. I don't, oh. Doesn't seem right. Maybe this isn't Pats. A bunch of crocs. Oh, pots. Croc pots. Sorry. A bunch of croc. Crockery, I suppose. That is. Crockery. Okay. And then a toddler's eruption is a molar. Okay, so you could have... Is that a term? An erupted molar? An impacted molar? Uh, that makes more sense than Malar. Okay. So we have to finish, we have to somehow find a way to break into this bit of the grid. Let's keep marching through the downs. So was fueled by, oh, I don't think, yeah, okay, should have looked at these earlier. So this could be ran on maybe, you were fueled by, I don't know, praise, you ran on praise, for instance. Car was fueled by petrol, it ran on petrol. And then mint could be new if it's describing a condition uh, of an object, a collectible object, maybe. It's, it's mint, it's brand new. Um, black. And ammonia has one. Ammonia has one. Is it something silly, like one N or one O or something like that? Uh, maybe not. Is it referring to an atom in... Is this referring to ammonia as a compound or something? I'm not sure. Anyway, let's keep looking. Makes per, maybe. So once again, in keeping with this puzzle's character, this could be referring to a cat or a car, perhaps. You could 
rev an engine to make it purr. You know, revs makes purr. Um, could be you pets, pets a cat. Uh, could be something else. Speak sharply could be bark, perhaps. 2003 film, I'm just guessing. I'm not going to leave that there until we've we've done some confirming or denying. 2003 film in which the title character explains Son of a Nutcracker. Well, in three letters, I'm going to guess Elf, which is not a film I've seen, but it seems like, based on the movie poster, it seems like a film in which that would happen. So this probably isn't Bark after all. So what about this? Letters on some foundation. Maybe this isn't Elf. Letters on some foundations. Oh, oh, could be SPF. So this could be foundation. So once again, many different things that foundation could be. It could be foundation of a building, could be a or charitable organization, a foundation. It could be foundation meaning makeup, which I'm guessing it is in this case. So SPF for sun protection factor. So to speak sharply and then makes per maybe. Well, that doesn't help because we knew it was going to have an S there. Blank, brilliant, diamond cut. I'm not sure. And raw footage. Raw footage. Oh, sorry. This is the question mark yet again. Uh, okay. So what could this be referring to? I mean, could it literally be something raw that is several feet long? Like an, I don't know, tripe or something? I'm not sure. Biggest stars. A-listers. So once again, this isn't referring to stars in the sky. It's not an astronomical clue. It's referring to celebrities, the biggest stars, A-listers. And then speak sharply. Why do I not see what that is? Is SPF incorrect? It makes per maybe. So it could be revs as in an engine in a car. I, would have to, I guess it would have to be an internal combustion engine car, not an electric car. Uh, blank brilliant, diamond cut. I don't know. Evil brilliant, is that something? Oh, snip, speak sharply, snip, as in your snippy. And raw footage. Oh, a scene, maybe, if it is if it is in fact footage of a film, although we need the question mark, we need the pun to, to be something. Oh, a nude scene, I see. I was, I was focusing on the wrong word, perhaps. So footage of nudity, footage that's it's very raw, you could say, a nude scene, raw footage, that's very clever. Okay, so what is this? Like Los Angeles's Griffith Observatory. Oh, Art Deco, probably. There we go. So, oh, maybe this is... Oh, snap, right? That makes much more sense than snip. Speaks sharply. You snap at somebody. There we go. And so oval brilliant is a diamond cut. There we go. There we go. To go back to see again, maybe, is to rewind a, a video. Uh, it's an increasingly outdated reference, I suppose. Stage support, oh, a riser. Yes, you could have a riser on the stage. Sometimes, I don't know, sometimes a drummer will be on a riser, for instance. Lift them up. Oh, Black Widow, there we go, the uh, spider. And ammonia has well, ammonia has an odor, okay. It was a much more straightforward version of this clue than I was making it in this case. And then to escape something is to elude it. Oh, did I see that? I probably did see it and didn't didn't think about it very long. But in any case... There's that. And I think I've seen all the crosses. Yeah. Okay. So let's get this tidied up, shall we? Sign of fall and key element of opera, opera seria. Sea World roller coaster ride. Jenny for one. I just want to make sure I've seen all the clues. Blank order. Um... There's a few good men said at Guantanamo, Gitmo, as it's, I'm wondering that because of the informally. I realized I maybe wasn't thinking about the informally before. It would need to be something that's abbreviated here. Does that help? At the ready, on tap, maybe? Gran Turismo, oh, Maserati, perhaps. There's another, uh, I don't know, Italian sort of supercar, I guess, or I don't know if a Maserati is a supercar, but certain, uh, maybe it is. I don't know what defines that, but in any case, extremely expensive uh, luxury sports car. So what is the, oh, ga oh, gag order, maybe. You could put a gag order on somebody to stop them 
speaking about a particular topic. And then that's the spirit ghost. Okay, good. Uh, so that's the spirit, one might say, about a ghost upon seeing a ghost. So if you imagine the exclamation point being somebody pointing to a thing and exclaiming the clue, that would work here for ghost. And then safety net. And then what was this again? Nubian Museum locale. Oh, um, why do I not see this? Is it uh, Aswan? Does that work with this safety net? I'm not sure. Two something? Why do I not see this safety net? And again, right, I have to remember it has that question mark. Which I, again, I don't think I was thinking about when I was looking at this earlier, or at least didn't keep it in my mind. Tiny seeds, seeds of green fruits, technically. Technically. Tiny seeds of green fruits, technically. Peas? Are peas technically tiny seeds of green fruits? I suppose so. Yeah. The way that they're shelled, I guess they are sort of tiny seeds. Yeah. That's funny. Good, good point, I guess. Crossword. <laughs> or Caitlin Reed, or Will Shorts, or whoever. Sign of Paul. Sign of Fall, sorry. Oh, Scorpios. Ah, so here's here's a meaning I wasn't thinking about at all. I was, again, focusing on meanings of the word fall, but I should have been focusing on different meanings of the word sign, in this case, sign of the zodiac, which must be Scorpio, I suppose. I can never remember which goes with what months or seasons. Oh, so where lava lava skirts are worn, Samoa, perhaps. And then Jenny for one, don't know. SeaWorld roller coaster ride. Manta? As in a manta ray, perhaps? That seems plausible. So maybe this is Aria after all. And then safety net. Oh, two points? This must be a basketball thing. Jenny for one. Ass. What does that mean? <laughs> is that right? So this if this if this does look like it is ass one after all. It is. Okay. There we go. That was it. That was it. I found that to be a pretty tricky puzzle. Actually, maybe more tricky than the, maybe tougher than the average Friday for me, I thought. Um, and we had, especially the center of this clue, or sorry, of the, of the puzzle, perhaps we had peak and easily had and wanted one. And oh, maybe those were the, oh, and really, really fancy. So they all seem so obvious once you've already solved them. Of course, that's the problem with going over crosswords afterwards. But um, but so many of these could have been other things and you really need to sort of take commit to one of them or at least softly commit to one of them so that you can start figuring out if those crosses are going to work. Maybe it was Tapas that started me off there. Um, so there we have it. That was, I think, a pretty tough Friday, but I really liked the degree of ambiguity and misdirection and red herrings throughout the, throughout the grid. So, um, thank you, Caitlin Reed for that. I thought that was a, um, maybe almost more Saturday like in that regard, but uh, maybe, yeah, sort of somewhere in between it's Friday and half, perhaps somewhere between Friday and Saturday. Um, but I really liked, I, I liked that and I had to definitely dig into it and, um, stick with these different corners of the grid to get enough going on that I could start to disambiguate some of the more ambiguous, uh, clues. So yeah, I had, a good time with that puzzle. Let me know if you did as well, how you fared with that. It was, it was a bit of a tough one, I would say. And now let's discuss a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. Let's see. I did already highlight these. So uh, Hugo uh, Pietris confirms the nagging suspicion I had throughout that solve. This must have been knowing or intentional on the part of Will Shorts, I would think. Funnily enough, Epe, O'Hare, and B team all did come up in yesterday's crossword. So the previous day's crossword. So two days in a row, all three of those clues were there. Almost gave me deja vu solving today. P.S. I really appreciate you explaining the answers. As an international viewer, it often helps with the answers I don't understand. Well, good. Thank you, Hugo. I'm glad to help. Um, Mark Owens says, I didn't know what an e-boy was either. After solving the puzzle, I asked my sons, 15, 14, and 10, if they were e-boys, and each told me they weren't, but they all knew what one was. It's an emo kid who wears animal st anim anime style clothing, apparently. Kids these days. So there we go. And Maddie P72 clarifies that disc golf is literally playing golf with frisbee discs. You try and throw the frisbee into a chain basket like you would try and putt a golf ball into a hole. 
whereas ultimate frisbee is a team sport similar to American football where you have to catch the frisbee in an end zone to score points. So thank you. Sorry about confusing that. And uh, Jell says, interesting that Kettle One is sold as vodka in the U.S. It's a Dutch brand of Jennifer, which is more comparable to gin. So uh, Jennifer is sort of a precursor to gin, but it, it does still exist on its own. Um, and with gin's popularity nowadays, selling it as vodka instead of gin or Jennifer in the U.S. might have been a poor decision. Um, Declan, though, explains, this might be the most minute detail ever, but they're actually different spirits. In the States, Kettle One is just a grain vodka, and the Jennifer isn't sold although it appears to be differentiated by being spelled as Kettle One, the numeral one in Europe, as opposed to Kettle One, the O-N-E one. So it's funny, strange distinction. And there we have it. I think that's what I had from yesterday. I'm sorry if I missed something that something else you, you left, um, but that was what I happened to catch. And just now, I mean, and I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the crossword. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I hope you'll join me tomorrow for the Saturday puzzle, when perhaps we'll get an even more uh, misdirecting and and complex and ambiguous version of a themeless, uh, a weekend themeless puzzle. We'll have to see. Um, so look forward to that and come do come join me for it. I, I hope you do. And uh, do subscribe to the channel. Uh, like I said, it's been nice to see how many people have been subscribing recently. So thank you to everybody who has done so. And I will be back tomorrow for the Saturday puzzle. I hope you join me. But until that point, Please do have an excellent remainder of your Friday. Take care. <laughs>